down. The wage gap. Uh, what would your opinion on this? I mean, it's not my opinion. It's statistical fact. This is bullshit. <laughs> okay, the... the, the, the <clears throat> This, the, the 78 cents on the dollar myth is just that. It's a myth. Time magazine actually found as early as 2010 that in the 50 biggest cities in the United States, women were actually earning more than men. If they had the same job qualifications, the same number of years in the workforce, the same number of hours worked, the reason that women on average are paid less is because women take time off, they take less risky jobs, they don't take as much time at work, they would rather be home with their families. These are choices that women make. And it's astonishing to me that feminists actually degrade those choices as though it's a terrible thing when a woman takes time off. Well, it's, it's her choice. I mean, I thought that was your whole deal. Let's put it this way. Call me crazy, but I find painting menstrual blood on your face off-putting. <laughs> it's just not my thing. I mean, I, can, I think there's a reason why these, many of these women will die single and alone. Um, but, uh, but don't worry, they'll have their 83 cats to comfort them. Let me ask you this. What was the weapon used at Aurora in the movie theater? It was in, yeah, it was, it was an assault rifle, sure. Okay. What was the weapon used in the Oregon shopping mall? Uh, I believe it was an assault rifle, correct? Okay. What was the weapon used at Sandy Hook? It was an assault rifle. What was the weapon used at the incident around Christmas when the firemen were lured to, lured to their deaths in New York State firemen? And bought illegally, that was, a, that, was a, that was an assault rifle. Right, so the last four mass shootings in America were all the assault rifles. And the vast, vast, so that, vast... That is the reason, well, Mr. Shapiro, and you can smirk at me, and you can laugh at I'm me, not smirking. and you can accuse me of standing on the graves of dead children. And being a bully, yes. But that is the reason that people like me and Mark Kelly and Gabrielle Giffords want to have assault weapons like that removed from civilian hands. Y your passion that on the, the issue point. doesn't really justify the, the rationale for why you want to ban assault weapons, you but not handguns. You don't understand why we want to remove the preferred weapon of choice, uh, these killing machines, well, I would like from you the to hands of deranged young men. All I'm asking is for you to be philosophically consistent. If what you're worried about is the removal of killing machines from the hands of mm -hmm. deranged young people, then maybe we should talk about a blanket gun ban. And let's get to what the left really wants here. And the, you know, you say that you're for why the Second Why is it about Amendment. left or right? Because in Britain, this never is about left or right, this issue. Why is it here? Well, you know, we can talk about Britain in a second. I think the reason that it's about left and right here is because fundamentally the right believes that the, the basis for the Second Amendment, and they believe in the Second Amendment, the basis for the Second Amendment is not really about self-defense and it's not about hunting. It is about resistance to government tyranny. That's what the founders said and that's what the right believes in this country. Which tyranny are you fearing yourself? Uh, I fear the possibility of a tyranny rising in this country in the next 50 to 100 years. Let me tell you something, Pierce. The fact that my grandparents and great-grandparents in Europe didn't fear that is why they are now ashes in Europe. How can you argue that racism is not a driving factor in income inequality? Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... <laughs> and when... And when... It, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. Explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks, black kids in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain, if it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened. Some people don't have privilege when you basically just said that trans people aren't valid. They're not a thing. They're just girls pretending to be boys or boys pretending to be girls. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Like, okay. Well, someone's excited. Okay. Biological, <laughs> but gender is a completely different thing. No, gender is not disconnected from sex. So. It's not so, completely disconnected, but it's still a cultural thing. It's still from society. It's still okay. In the mind. No, it is not in the mind. Okay, you're not a man if you think you're a man. And I didn't say pretending, or if I did, I shouldn't have said pretending. Let me amend. Said playing. Okay, I said a boy who thinks he's a girl. That's the, the usual phraseology I use. Not playing. I usually say a boy who thinks he's a girl or a girl who thinks he's a boy, which is technically what we're talking about here. As far as the actual psychological issues uh, at play, it used to be called gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder. Now they call it gender dysphoria. The idea that, that sex or gender are malleable is not true. Okay, and I'm not denying your humanity if you're a transgender person. I am saying that you are not the sex to which you claim to be. 
you're still a human being, and you're a human being with an issue that I'm, you know, I wish you Godspeed in, in dealing with in whatever way you see fit. But if you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend that men are women and women are men, no. My answer is no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Okay, but you're still saying these kids should like, not be accepted because they don't really fit in either place? They can't just like... I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. Where's that written, though? Okay, in the name Boy Scouts. <laughs> Well, if you get pregnant, yes, because you don't get to kill things just because it's in your uterus. It's my body. How about you just stay out of it? How about it's the baby? You don't get to kill it. You're so much about how. I don't care about your appendix. <laughs> I don't care about your thorax. I don't even care about your uterus. I care about what's in it. And I can take out my appendix if I don't want it. So why can't I take out other parts of my body? Because they're not independent living human beings. So they're not independently living human beings when they're a bundle of cells. Oh, okay. So, so let me get this. So, okay. Let's let's assume that you are that your scientific knowledge is vast. Let's assume your scientific knowledge. So, are you also against partial birth abortion? I think it's like I don't understand why people would have a like. I'm not. You, at what point? You, at what point does that bundle of cells become a human being in your view? Um. Sorry. Not really. I mean, this is. No, this I, I just question. need to calm down for. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Do you want to go to another question? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Um, what is the point of having a bundle of cells? No, I mean, the, the, it's, it, that is a relevant question. If your argument is that it's a bundle of cells, then the question becomes well, why it's not a bundle of cells. Like, unless it's a threat to the mother, they form maternal abortion, it shouldn't happen. But if it's a threat to the mother's health or the mother, like, I don't see why he would force a living human being to give birth to that. Because it's another living human So you're going to kill the mother to save the baby? And no, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You're talking about a case where the mother's life is in danger. I don't know what you're talking about. I care and stuff after they're born. I agree with you that, that, that abortion is an exception when the, life, when the mother's life is in danger. But the concept of bodily autonomity means that I don't have to give up any part of my body unless the baby, I say so. The baby is not part of your body. The baby yeah, is a baby. Like right. Really, my wife is pregnant right now, and she's 30 weeks pregnant. Yeah. Like 30, actually, 32. That baby is kicking the living crap out of her. Okay, that is a living human being in there. Okay, and I promise you that it is not a bundle of cells. I can guarantee you it's not a bundle of cells because that is a baby. Okay, and, 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 and I'm sorry to. You're technically a bundle of cells that is requiring. You're technically a bundle of cells, right? <laughs> And it turns out I didn't need to see a black guy as president to believe that black people could be presidents in the United States. The only people who believe that are people who are misinformed about the nature of the United States by the Democratic Party and actual racists. I'm, I'm offended by the language of uprising applied to people who are breaking into other black people's stores and looting them. Uh, this, is not, this is a lack of values. And people who, people who are destroying private property, destroying cop cars, in an uprising against what exactly? Against the black police chief, against a mostly minority police force, against the black mayor, against the black president, against the black attorney general, against the entirely, uh, against a, a city council that, that is 9 of 15 are black and all 15 are elected Democrats? Uh, what is the uprising against? What is it seeking to achieve? I still don't see what exactly the, the, the riots are seeking to achieve. Bottom line is, uh, it, this is all... It, it all could be boiled down to just act like a mensch. Act like a human being. Honestly, it's not, a useful, it's not useful to riot. It's not useful to break things. It's not useful to throw rocks at people. And the idea that we're supposed to sort of correlate let's, let's your level of on outrage. The idea. I'm going to stick to the 30 seconds on yeah, this the last one, sentence. The, the, last okay. sentence. Yeah. The, the idea that we're supposed to correlate your level of outrage with a certain level of justification. In other words, the more outraged you are and the more angry you are, the more justified you must be is absolute nonsense. Through all the most unfunny people, from Comedy Central, you got Stephen Colbert, who used to be on Comedy Central and is no longer funny, Samantha Bee, who's never very funny, and Trevor Noah, who in the womb must have been just smacked with the unfunny jar. Like God, God took down the various jars to make a human being, and he took the humorlessness jar and he poured it all over Trevor Noah as, a, as a, prenatally. People being able to accumulate wealth and the benefits throughout time, mm -hmm. how can you say that hasn't put black people today at a disadvantage because of that. It, okay, it has put black people today at an initial disadvantage, but that does not mean that the rules by which they play are different than white people now. Okay, so the fact is that some people are born poor, and put a race aside for a second, some people are born poor, and some people are born rich in America. Right, we can acknowledge this. Some people are born poor, and some people are born rich. 
That does not mean that, number one, the poor people have a right to go to the rich people and take away their money because that's called theft. And second of all, it also does not mean that making individual good decisions does not allow the poor person to become rich. There's tremendous income mobility in the country even still. And so the idea is, if the idea is that your grandfather, your great-grandfather couldn't go to college because of the racism in the GI Bill after World War II, and that's why you flunked out of high school, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. You know, make good decisions, you will get a better result. It doesn't mean we all start in the same place, we don't. None of us start in the same place. Some of us are smarter, some of us are dumber, some of us are taller, and some of us are shorter. You know, that's, that's the reality of life. That's just how the universe is. The question is what we do to better ourselves. And if the idea is that you get to take money from people who were not involved in your oppression in the first place in order to rectify something that happened to great granddad, then we can play this game of historic grievance all the way down the line. She only wanted one Blackberry. You remember that? Not true, right? She had multiple, multiple devices on which she was viewing things. And by the way, she had more than one server. It wasn't just one in her bathroom. She had one in many bathrooms. Basically, any place that Bill had sex in the house with someone not her, she had a server. You must speak the language of morality. The left wins because nobody on the left knows anything about politics. They know you're evil. That's it. They know you're a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe who hates the poor. <laughs> right? That's what they know about you. And it's not they think that about you. They know that about you. Deep down, they know all these evil things about you, which is why Thanksgiving dinners are always so awkward if you're unfortunate to have Jewish relatives or, or you have friends on the left, which are the, the, the exact same focus group. The, the, the answer to all of this is to speak in the language of morality. This is why I never say the government compels people to do stuff. The government does not compel people to do stuff. The government compels people to do stuff at point of gun. Why do I say that? Because leftists are scared of guns. When we say the government compels things, People say, oh, well, compulsion. Well, that's just like taxes, right? No. That's somebody coming to your house in the middle of the night with a SWAT team, with a gun, pointing it at you and dragging you off to prison for not doing what they want. The reality is that this is a, abortion is not a complex issue. It's a very simple issue. That's either a life or it isn't. It's that simple. If it's a life, you can't kill it. If it's not a life, you can do whatever you want. It's a kidney. Right? So, and, and then it becomes, okay, so how do we define life? And the answer to me is you define life by the same way that you would define life if you found it on Mars, right? It's, if you found a single-celled organism on Mars, it's, it's life, right? I know, as, as somebody who has one baby and another on the way, you know, that, that what's in there is not a random piece of tissue. At the very least, it's a, even if you don't believe it's a life yet, it's certainly a potential human life, and that seems to be more valuable than your convenience. And there's something nasty and cruel and degrading about the idea that you get to decide the, whether something is a life or not based on whether it's convenient to you or because it's in your body. By the way, this is exactly, it's a, it truly is amazing actually how history repeats itself. The argument in favor of abortion is exactly the same as the argument in favor of slavery. Exactly the same, right? You're on my land, I get to decide. It's up to me to decide whether you're a person or property. It's up to me, right? What are you gonna say? It's on my land, what are you gonna do about it? The basic premise of socialism is, I'm here, I'm breathing, give me crap. <laughs> Right? I, I have an, you have an obligation to care for me. I have a right to health care. I can force that doctor to go to medical school, expend $200,000, spend her entire life learning medicine, and then I can walk into her house and force her to provide me medicine. Right? Capitalism, by nature, is the opposite. Capitalism is the idea that I will starve unless I give you a good or a service that you want. Right? If I don't give you something that you want, I'm not going to eat tonight. It's forced altruism, effectively. Right? We have to have a trade. We have to come to some sort of consensus. I have to give you something cool, and you have to give me something cool. Right? It's great. Socialism is rape, and capitalism is consensual sex. There's a, there's a video that's going around the internet getting all sorts of play about income inequality. Income inequality is the stupidest issue. Income inequality means nothing. Right? I mean, I'm, I have a lot of income inequality with Bill Gates, but I'm doing pretty well, and I don't care that Bill Gates is doing really well. The only thing we should all care about is that there are poor people. We should figure out how poor people can do better, not how to make Bill Gates less rich. But, what, but th this video is going around and saying, here's a poll of what Americans think the wealth distribution should look like, and here is what the wealth distribution actually looks like. And I watch this video in bewilderment, and young people love it, and I'm, I, I watch this video in bewilderment saying, who told you that you get to tell the universe how wealth is distributed? Right? Who told you that you have a moral say as to how wealth is distributed? It's immoral, it's evil, it's wrong. You're going to have to steal people's labor from them. But people are not told this, and so they think that their own subjective vision of what reality should look like should govern what reality actually looks like. And it's only later, after 80 years of communist failure, that they realize, oh, that, and, and hundreds of millions of people dead, that they realize, oh, that was a bad idea. My wife is a doctor, okay, which means she's accomplished more in her short life than Hillary Clinton has in her entire life. 
My wife's a doctor who takes care of people. She never at any point in her life sat around thinking, you know what, I can't be a doctor until Hillary Clinton, a corrupt old shrew, becomes a presidential nominee. My mom, when I was growing up, my mom worked and my dad was a stay-at-home dad. And my mom didn't sit around wondering, can I run film and television companies? I don't know. I'll have to think about whether Hillary Clinton could become president. This is all so stupid. Women, by the way, are a majority of bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and associate's degrees. Next year, according to the American Bar Association, there will be a majority of law students in the United States. American women don't need Hillary Clinton to shatter a glass ceiling that doesn't exist. Social justice is an oxymoron. Okay? If a guilty man is acquitted because he's the right race, that is anti-justice. If an innocent man is convicted because he's the wrong race, that's anti-justice. Social justice, however, suggests that your group identity, your identity as a person, rel- <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,